Lord, I stand amazed. I stand amazed in your presence. Hallelujah. There is nothing you cannot do. Lord, I stand amazed. I stand amazed in your presence. There is joy. There is joy, peace, and hope. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you in all the earth. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. I stand amazed in your presence. Hallelujah, there is nothing you cannot do. Lord, I stand amazed, I stand amazed in your presence. There is joy, there is joy, peace and hope. Oh, there's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you in all the earth, in all the earth. Nobody like you, Jesus. There's no one like you. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do my things you do glorious things you're a faithful god awesome it's your name you do mighty things you do glorious things you're a faithful god awesome it's your name your name greetings everybody welcome once again it's your favorite program, a chapter a day. On here, we get to know who we are in Christ, the power we possess, the things we can and cannot do, we should or should not do, so that we can live a successful Christian life here on earth and end up spending eternity with God in heaven. Heaven in view. That's the whole idea, of course. And while we're at it, we also create an audio Bible, King James Version, and then we study the Word of God together so that we can get to know what the Word of God is saying concerning us and we can live a practical, real life. We can actually become living epistles read of men. We can actually preach the gospel and talk gospel to every single person who cares to listen. Of course, that's why we're here doing a chapter a day so that we can all understand the scriptures and get a personal relationship with God that will bring transformation, deliverance, healing, and all that we need to be the way God wants us to be and end up spending eternity with God in heaven. Ain't that beautiful? Of course it is. Very, very, very beautiful. We're glad to have each and every one of you connect with us on the chapter a day today. We don't take it for granted. We're hoping that you all can do amazing while you serve God. It's another beautiful day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Sure we would. So let's go. We start by singing, as you always see. If you started with us, you will notice we we're singing. And after singing, we'll get to go on. Oh, sorry. 
after singing we get to go on and hand over the session to god after handing over the session to god we then get to doing the birthday party where we give shout outs to people we do the birthday prayer and then we study the word of god we we kind of read the word of god and creating the audio bible and that we study to make sure that that word becomes a practical reality in our lives. We're not just hearing about it and all that. We're actually seeing that it's coming to pass and it's doing something marvelous for us. Okay. So that's exactly what we're doing today on the chapter today. I'm hoping and trusting that you all are going to enjoy it. You all are going to have a great time together and it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be amazing, totally and completely amazing today. So I'm glad to have you all on here. Let's get on with the chapter today today, and we're going to have a great time. Our Bible party is taken from the book of Psalms 149. Psalms 149. We have just one more to get to Psalms 150. I told you guys, if for nothing, please tell everybody, tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend. Tomorrow is Psalm 150. They cannot afford to miss it. God is about to do something tremendous in the lives of his children. You cannot afford to miss Psalms 150. It's going to be like no other chapter a day ever. I'm not sure there's going to be any like it ever again. It's just going to be amazing. You have to be there. So Psalm 149 has nine verses. 1499. Okay. And we're going to be doing everything that we do. And then we'll get right on there when the time comes so guys get ready we are doing this together i am ready i always say i was born ready i don't know about you but if you're like me then you would also tell yourself i was born ready right so let's go Father, we thank you for this day that you've made. We rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for your mighty hand of protection, provision. We thank you for your loving kindness, your tender mercies. We thank you for all that you've done. You're doing and you're still to do in our lives because in everything, you work for good to them that love and serve you and are called according to your purpose. Thank you for bringing us here safely today. Thank you for making it possible for us to be seated here again, to sup and dine and fellowship in your presence and be together lord we are grateful you say we're towards we are gathered in your name you're right there in their midst so lord we know you're right here with us and you're about to do great and marvelous things in our lives father we say thank you we bless your holy name oh god we give you all the praise we give you all the honor and adoration because you deserve it thank you heavenly father thank you for your loving kindness thank you for your tender mercies increase while i decrease so it's going to be you and you alone that will be seen felt, heard, and experienced throughout this edition of the chapter a day. We say thank you. We can't thank you enough, Lord. We are grateful for all that you've done, you're doing, and you're still to do in our lives, and the lives of our loved ones and our relatives, oh God. Thank you for all the miracles. We thank you for all the great things you are about to do. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the saints shall say a ginormous, amen, amen, and amen. Welcome, Minister Mark, to... A chapter a day, we're always glad and excited and elated to have you. We don't take it for granted. Thank you, thank you, thank you for always coming through. Okay, for our birthday party today, we have Mr. Parkins Nanatuom. Mr. Parkins Nanatuom, I actually got to know him when I was in Ghana. He was a youth leader in our church. He was a very friendly person and very welcoming. But after a short while, when I got there, he also left. We connected normally on social media and all that we get to talk from time to time he also supports the things i do which i'm very grateful for i don't take for granted i don't take lightly thank you so much the next person is mr achiri atanga belmondo this i got to know him through my other sister my other sister had friends and like there were, there were a group of these guys that um she knew and mr achiri belmondo was one of them He's an amazing person as well, very friendly. He loves to seek out and help people who, like he likes to be the voice, the voiceless. Let me put it that way. Somebody who go all out to help people who need help in his own little way. I really, really admire it very much. And I'm grateful that we got connected. We got to know each other. He also supports the things I do a lot. And he's always very happy when I have to do something like this. He, he always gets like totally wild and excited that I'm celebrating his birthday all the time. 
I'm a birthday freak. That is official. You all should know by now. It's not supposed to be a strange thing to people, right? Everybody should know by now that I'm a birthday freak. I love to celebrate people on their birthdays. Not just on their birthdays. I wish I could celebrate you every single day that I get an opportunity to do that because I believe that whatever gets re rewarded gets repeated. And so if these people know that these things they're doing, maybe to me, you know, because they've related with me, maybe these things they're doing to me is nice. They'll want to replicate it to another person or they'll want to do it again and again and again because they know this thing is nice. So they'll keep doing it again and again and again, you get. But if they don't know what other thing they did to me or they did to this person is nice or not, they might not know whether they should redo it again or not. So yes, it has a whole lot of benefits. When you tell people who they are to you, when you tell people the nice things they've done to you, the things you're grateful for that they've done to you, it actually helps to replicate it. It helps to, to, to make it um, get repeated, to get the people repeating those things. That's what it does. So try as much as possible to tell the people around you who they mean to you, what they, what, who they are to you and who they mean, all that they mean to you and all the great things that they've done for you that you really, really appreciate and you're grateful for. We should also learn to do that to God as well. We should be, we should have this attitude of gratitude where every time we can sit down and actually appreciate God for all the things he has done for us, the things he's doing and the things he's yet to do. God is a faithful father. If he says that he's going to do a thing, he will do a thing. If he has not done it yet, it doesn't mean he won't do it. It's probably just not the time for it to be done. So hang in there and trust God that in his time, he'll really do what he has said he's going to do. That's God for you. Okay. Welcome to everybody who is in the live stream today. If you're there and I've not said hello to you, please, you can just put a comment in the comment section and I'll um, acknowledge you and welcome you properly. The last but not the least is Mam Lima Nabila. Mam Lima Nabila is actually a friend of mine that we kind of met on social media and then we finally met physically. It was just amazing. That's what I love. I love to meet people. I love to connect with people. I love to make friends. I love to network and all that. So I got connected with her and oh my God, she's way, 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 way amazing than I ever knew she was before meeting her physically. You know, that's just when you meet somebody online, then you guys click and then you're just going on and on. And then you finally get to meet physically. It's actually beautiful. She's really, really an awesome person. She loves God with a passion. She loves to do business. She loves to help people. I mean, she goes all out to help people. And sometimes she does it even to her detriment, but she still does it anyways. I remember living in the house for a while, some time ago before I traveled. I mean, she and everybody in the house had to make me like super comfortable until I was feeling so lazy, feeling so pampered and spoiled and all. And it was really, really amazing. I really enjoyed it there. Even their dad is like so welcoming and all like, I mean, it was really beautiful. All right, beautiful. And then she also gets to do business. I don't know which business she's into right now, but I remember she was doing um, um frozen, frozen pottery business, like something like that. Um, fresh green. I'm not sure. I remember the name exactly. Mam Nabila, I hope you're gonna forgive forgive me for that. I can't remember. I think it's fresh green, if I'm not mistaken. So she'll put it in the comment section when she sees this video. And you all can go support her business and make sure that you get to part um to partner with her, like in purchasing her products. She does really good. She'll never compromise quality for anything. I know that for a surety because I've been with her. I've um We've spoken about some things together and all that we've interacted. So I know she's an amazing person. So of course, get to patronize her business, buy her stuff. If you also do think you cannot buy or you don't need it, you can actually share it. That's another way to patronize someone's business. Because when you share it, a lot of people in your audience might need it and they would not have been able to see it until you share it. Okay, so please do well to share. So let's go again. Happy birthday to you, Mr. Parkinson at home. Happy birthday to you, Mr. Chiri Atanga. And a very special happy birthday to my sister and friend and woman of God, Mam Lima Nabila. Pretty woman of God on fire. I mean, she's just so amazing. 
So let's pray for the birthday people and then get right on with the Bible party. Like I told you guys, our Bible party is taken from the book of Psalm 149 and he has nine verses. So are you ready? Let's get this party rolling. Father, we thank you for all these amazing people who were born today. We thank you for adding a new year to their lives. So, God, we thank you that as you open these beautiful pages upon their lives, plain and clean and clear, you write awesome stories that will give them every reason to celebrate, jubilate, dance, and rejoice. Father, if you tarry to come, they'll be here same time next year, testifying of all your goodness upon their lives because this will be their best, best birthday yet. You perfect all that content them. Give them a sound 126 state, a state of continuous laughter, singing, and rejoicing. Because when you turn the captivity of Zion, we're like they that dream, and our mouths are filled with laughter, and our, our lips are filled with singing, oh God, and rejoicing. Let that be a practical reality for them. Lord, I pray that you cause them to increase in wisdom and stature, gaining favor before God and before men. Lord, that their gifts will make a way for them, causing them to stand before kings, not before mean men. Let their path keep shining brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. Lord, let your word be a lamb unto their feet and a light to their part. Cause them to be trailblazers, space setters, and world changers in the mighty name of Jesus. Give them all that it takes to be able to go and conquer their world. Lord, I pray that they are going to progress and not retrogress you divinely connect them to people and things that will cause them to be their best you divinely disconnect them from people and things that will cause them to stagnate or retrogress in the mighty name of jesus lord cause them to be the head and not the tail cause them to be above always and not beneath lord whatever they lay their hands on you prosper whatever they tread their feet upon give it to them as a possession in the mighty name of jesus father i pray oh god that this is going to be their best birthday yet lord i pray that you do for them that which no man can do you. you open doors for them that no man can open and shut doors for them that no man can short. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you're not only going to take them to the top, but you're going to take them and teach them how to stay there permanently, all for your glory. Lord, even as you bless them, oh God, let this blessings and compass them as a shield round about and let it go a long way, oh God, to be a protective shield around them, oh God, that no weapon formed the fashion against them shall prosper. And as these blessings overflow, oh God, if people come in contact with them, they'll literally rub off of the blessings. As you bless them, they'll be a blessing to their generation and beyond. Father, I pray that you're going to continuously guide them. You're going to continuously lead them all for your glory. That you're going to give them all that it takes, oh God, to do the things that they need to do. As they continuously fulfill purpose, if they get to that place where they feel overwhelmed, they feel like they want to give up or back out or hang in the towel. So here a clean, loud, clear voice that's going to say, this is the way you walk down it. They will not derail, they will not stray. They will stay on course. They will be the ones manifesting to the growing nation that are waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. They will be the ones, oh God, that will receive all the blessings that come with trusting you and believing in you and depending on you and relying on you and not straying the part. Thank you, Lord God, because we know you always hear an answer. Lord, we seal every prayer request with the blood of Jesus because we know it is done. Enlighten them, O oh God, so that they know those that are supposed to be destined to help us too. And they will strategically position themselves to help these people. As you're also going to strategically position destiny help us all around them. So when they cry out for help, help is going to be made available for them in Santa. Lord, we say thank you. We appreciate you. Let money meet money in their pockets. Blessings meet blessings in their lives. Favor meets favor in their lives, even as you clothe them with a the garment of praise, honor, and favor in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We appreciate you. We know you're a prayer answering God, so we know that you've heard and answered us this day and always. Take the lead. Take preeminence. But now, and forever in jesus mighty and blessed name we pray with thanksgiving and all the saints shall say a ginormous amen well you see this lady right here i love to sing the amen so are you ready are you with me let's go amen 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 Amen. Let it be so. Amen. 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 In their lives. Amen. As we have prayed. Amen. Let it be in their lives. Let it be so. Amen. 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 In their lives. Amen. As we have prayed. Amen. Let it be in their lives. Amen. Let it be in the light 
God bless you all tremendously. May fill your bands with all good things. Enlarge your coast and do for you that which no man can do but God and God alone. I always get to say I love you so very much, but God loves you way, way more. Have a blast. Happy birthday. Je vous aime. I love you all so, so very much. Joyeux anniversaire à tout le monde. Okay, guys, it's time for the Bible party. Are you ready? Let's do this. Lord, Lord, and Lord, can these things keep short? Can it just stop? Yeah. So it's um one forty nine today, and he has nine verses. Let's do this. Psalm one hundred and forty nine. Praise ye the Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise in the congregation of saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with a timbrel and harp. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He'll beautify the milk with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouths and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the hidden and punishments upon the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. This is the word of the Lord, and all the saints shall say a ginormous thanks be to God. Welcome, 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 Minister Mag. We're glad to have you. Okay, it's either me. Your book, no, no. Can we hear you? Yes. This is lagging. Can we hear you? Can you hear me actually? Okay, but I can't hear you. I'm hoping that we all, the, the people can hear you. Oh, she's not talking now. If someone is in the comment section, please let us know if you can hear Minister Mark. I can read lips though, but I cannot. There's some sound that is coming somewhere, but I can't hear you. Why is this happening? Oh my God. Can't hear. I can't hear too. Oh, you can hear. You can hear me, but you can't hear her. Oh, we can't hear. Hey. 
A people. Oh my God, this is so not funny. Okay, guys, we're gonna go on and we're gonna be sorting this thing out. We'll um, sort this out and get to know what's going on. Let me add her again and see. Let's see if the people in the crowd can hear. Please, um, can you tell us still if you can hear Mr. Uh, Minister Mag now? Those in the comment section, help us. Oh my. Who's that? Someone said. I can't hear either. Well, we did a test run and this worked. Oh my God. Lord help us. Okay. So. Let's get on why she's sorting that out. We'll add her again. And see how this comes through. Yeah, well, can, can you hear, hear me? Background? Yes, loud and clear. Loud and clear. I can't hear you. I can hear you. It's okay now, we can hear you. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Oh my, it's muted. And it was so loud. It was so clear. Oh, my God. All is well. Can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Let me move from here. There's some noise in the kitchen. Okay. Finally. Well, finally, finally. <laughs> oh, my God. So, we are glad to have you on the chapter today. We are gl super you know? duper glad. It has been like 30 long days. In fact, 33 and counting because you, we have been trying to connect since the first that you came back online and it's like this craziness was not wanting you to come on and come and bless us as you always do. <laughs> Welcome. What have you learned? What have you learned? Oh, yeah. What have you learned from this song? Um, I, I have learned through our trying to get this right that in every situation, when you start feeling like you are losing it, just go back to the place of prayer. Oh, because yeah. we cannot take it for granted how much the enemy is trying to um, distract us, you know, from, from praising, worshipping God, from serving him, you know, from fellowshipping with him. Oh, and, yeah. uh, it doesn't make no sense that when you are not trying to do something like this for for the glorification, right? For the glory of God and stuff. Everything is working properly and stuff. 
And when you want to do something like this, it's like it's a fight, strong fight. But we're glad that you're finally here. So, guys, let's get on with this Bible party for today. What yes, did you learn? What did you learn? What did you learn? You know, um, there's um, the first part. It says, praise the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing to 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 the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. We need to sing to the Lord every single day, like. It, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a song that is already in existence. It could just be words that your heart can put to sound because of what God is doing in your life. You get, I mean, there are some days that I feel like, oh, this is what God is wanting me to sing. I just, I just want to say, I love you. I just want to say, I care. I just want to say you are an awesome God. I just want to say you're mighty. Sometimes it just comes in the form of music. And that's just me singing to the Lord a new song. So it could be a song that you've known before. It could be a song that is just coming at that time. It's just a ministration that you're ministering on to God because of who God is to you because of how he has, what he has done for you, what he's still doing, what he has promised that he would do. It just comes, it just flows. I tell you the truth. Walking in the spirit is a very beautiful thing that when you experience it once, you don't want to get off. Oh, I can, I can assure you, you don't want to get off. You just want to stay there. You, you just want the whole world to probably just come to a pause and then you should remain in that moment of just being in fellowship with God and just having koinonia with God. Like you will not want to move from there. I understand why Paul was saying when he enjoyed the transfiguration, when he viewed it, when he watched it, he says, Lord, just build three buildings here. One for this. He, the experience was so beautiful that he didn't want to move from there. So it's understandable. That's how it is. You just want to remain there. But anyway, we have work to do. We have to spread the gospel to the ends of the earth so we can remain in that moment. You know, when you've had that experience, you have to go out of there and go do the things that God has empowered you to do. That was some level of empowerment still. The transfiguration was another level of empowerment for Jesus, for him to continue doing his ministerial work. So while you've been in the presence, you have this koinonia with God and all through praise and worship, through singing, through dancing, through whatever means that you get to connect with God through, you need to go do the work that he has given you. You need to take the gospel to the ends of the year. <laughs> yeah. Princess. Yes, yeah, so to look at uh i want us to look at something in this um in this stanza the assembly of his faithful people i don't know um the gathering of saints um there was when i was a child when people would gather at uh, when someone has passed right at a funeral yeah. they will be singing all those sad songs and and you know and all of those kind of things and Yet some readings, the readings, and remember, we'll be talking about how we should not mourn like the pagans do, and um, all of those kind of things. And that there is hope, right? After and life after death and stuff like that. As I grew up, I started to realize that uh, you know, songs like this, gospel songs, Christian songs were being introduced. Now, I'm not talking about in church, I'm talking about at the funeral place, for example. Yeah, so I I now realize that it makes complete sense because saints are not only gathered where there is um, something good happening. For example, when a baby is born, oh, yeah. people think that is good, let's celebrate. But when somebody dies, that is bad. When we think about how um, we move from this world into it, after life, 
it, there's no other way to move from this world into the other into the kingdom without dying right and oh, yeah. if you want to think that they might somebody might have died prematurely or all of those things as a saint you can still sing to the lord in a new song you know praising oh, yeah. him even for that life and everything as difficult as it is it should be something that we we should also kind of embrace what do you think oh yeah that's true i remember my mom saying that when she goes, because we know where she's going, because she's in the right standing with God and all, we should be celebrating, not crying. If that's how it's supposed to be, you know, we're, we're not just um, um, doing the whole ceremony or whatever, just with, oh my God, what happened? We're not just doing that with the, with the, um, with, with no understanding. We're not going ahead and doing all of the, celebration or mourning or whatever with no understanding we're doing it with an understanding that this person has just gone to a better place and would eventually meet if we also remain in right standing with god would eventually meet you know so we'll be celebrating in a different kind of way so she was like you guys should not cry i remember when my dad died and they were taking her to the hospital so they were taking her to the hospital and then our house is just close to the hospital. So they took her from the back. The back side of the hospital actually has the mortuary. So we used to get in through the back and go to the ward where my dad was. And so when they were taking my mom, they didn't tell her at home that my dad had died. So they were taking her to the hospital. She was surprised that they told her that she's not bothered to carry anything. She was kind of doing breakfast like she normally do, does every other normal day. And then she was doing breakfast. So they came and told her that, no, she doesn't need to take the breakfast. She just come. That is something urgent. They need her at the hospital. And she was like, okay. So she just went. When she went and they were going, you know how she would try to take the road to go to the ward where my dad was. They were taking her towards the mortuary. And she was like, what's going on here? And then they told her that my dad has passed and everything. So she needs to come. And what I, I think she needed to sign some documents at the mortuary or something for them to. Do you know the first thing that came out from my mother's mouth? Praise the Lord. People were confused. Everybody was stunned. Like they, they could not understand. You know, it feels like you're praising the Lord that your husband has died. Are you, is that even okay? Is that even normal? I mean, a lot of people thought like that word, my, what probably done something to my father, like the family had done something to my father because a whole lot of spectacular thing happened spectacular things happen to each and every one of us i mean like literally all of us the children my mom everybody but they didn't know the inner inners and the details of all the things that were happening because my dad made some decrees on us before he died like he made those decrees and said god is going to do this for this person he's going to do this for this person whether there is there is or there is nothing he made all those decrees so now he's gone and we have an understanding. My mom, for the most part, had an understanding of where he had gone to because he ended up giving his life to Christ. And she now is screaming, praise the Lord. For somebody, they just told you your husband just died. And the first thing you scream out is praise the Lord. Like, how is that? How can that even be? She had an understanding. She was not just screaming like every other person will scream and maybe they'll start crying and wailing and sleeping on the ground and all they said my mom was so calm that everybody was confused she knew her husband and she knew what had happened she knew what had transpired he had accepted christ he had given his life to christ which was one thing that she had prayed for and desired with all of her being and all of her mind and then it happened and then my dad now has gone she knows my dad has gone to be with the lord so she would definitely be excited, you know, that kind of thing. But it was really scary. It was scary to people around who never had an understanding. So I believe, yeah, we, we should celebrate. We should celebrate, especially when we know where these people are going to. Especially when we know how these people live their lives and stuff like that. We should celebrate. We should not be um, just um, totally and completely sad. We should not take it like it's a bad thing is some level of transition and understanding where these people are transiting to mm, all the more reason why we should celebrate i believe so so yes yeah, that's that's a very good one we should we should praise god for 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 what he has done in the lives of people that we love people that we care about sometimes it may not look like it even jesus himself he wept right he wept 
So there are times that we have to weep. It's not weeping that it's not all weeping that is bad. And sometimes we hear those things that they say tears for joy, right? People are crying because something nice is so nice that they just can't help you, but it's tears that is coming out of their eyes. You know, that kind of stuff. So yes, I think that's a very good one. We should be able to rejoice even when people have gone. We should be able to. I, I brought this up because um, I know that it would encourage somebody. It's also a stage in my life I had crossed myself when I was faced with a series of losses when I got to this point, that was in 2016, and then I remember scripture also, we say that in all things, all, I, I thought it will work out for my yeah. good because I love the Lord. And, you know, lean not on your own understanding. A lot of scriptures, as I, as I learned, I just realized that the earlier I, I, I leave it all to God, you know, the earlier I surrender it all, even the hurt, the earlier yeah. I also get the relief and the comfort and the everything which is actually what I'm looking for, even in that situation. So you see, it, it, it makes sense actually for me to praise God at all times. Oh yeah. If oh, yeah. Tears coming down with the pain, I still praise him, you know, and I, I really hope that somebody who listens now or later might really think about it and be encouraged, yeah. Oh yes, oh yes, they definitely will be. Because sometimes people, um, it gets so hard to get to believe that these people have transitioned to a better place, especially if you know the person, I keep still saying that because if you're not sure where the person is transiting to, sometimes that's what hurts the most, or maybe you know, and you know the person is not transiting to the right place. That's what really hurts some people some more. You're like, oh, you've lost this person and you know you've lost them forever because you, you know that you probably never even see them again and stuff like that. So. We're, we're praying here that we we know that, as the Bible has said, we and our house will be saved. We're trusting God and believing that, yes, we and our household will be saved. As we're praying for them, we're preaching the gospel when we have the opportunity to. We're talking to them about God when we have the opportunity to. We trust that we all are going to be saved. And just so... Sometimes people don't even believe they're going to die. But let's just think. Let's just accept that you're not going to die. If the rapture occurs now, are you ready? If God comes right now, like the, if we get rapture right now, the trumpet sounds right now, are you going to go to heaven? Will you spend eternity with, with God in heaven? You need to think about it. And that's why the Bible says that we should be ready at all times because we do not know the, the day nor the hour. If, if anybody knew when a thief was going to come and steal in their house, they would prepare themselves and that thief would not be able to enter, right? So if we knew exactly when we're going to be raptured or something, we'll just live our lives anyhow and then wait for that day or maybe a day before and then we'll just prepare ourselves and get on there. Like, who are you kidding? <laughs> well, unfortunately, that's not how it is. But God's so kind, as he always is, he has told us that there are things that would see and we know that is a sign of the end. And we know that the end is really near. It will be like in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. And we're seeing it today. People are marrying and giving in marriage. People are drinking, partying and doing all those things. That's what is happening in our generation. Kingdoms against kingdoms, nations against nations, children against parents, parents against children, all those things. And we're seeing it today. We're seeing it. A lot of wild things are happening. A lot of craziness is going on in the world. So, um, when I get praying and sometimes the Holy Spirit will just tell me, it's not going to get any better. He says that a lot of times. He will tell me, it's not going to get any better. And I feel so scared to tell anybody. Like It's like you're the prophet of doom. But you know, because it's written in scripture, it says that all these things are going to happen before the trumpet is going to sound. So when you see it, he, he kept emphasizing on the fact that just keep being ready, just preparing yourself, because this is just showing you that the end is here. This is not going to get any better. I heard another pastor also said the same thing, and I think he was preaching, and he was talking about his country, I think Nigeria or something. A lot of a lot is going on in Nigeria. A lot is going on in many countries anyway, but a lot is going on in Nigeria as well. It was a Nigerian pastor, and he was saying, this is not going to get any better. All these prices that are 
that are spiking and going up like crazy, they're not going to come down. So don't sit here and be thinking and waiting. But the thing is that God is going to make his own to scale through it. So staying in God is what you need to do. Staying in God and trusting God and depending on God is what you need to do. Because if you don't, then that's when you feel the heat. It says, the Bible says that when they say there's a casting down, we will say there's a lifting up. It's God who makes that to happen. It doesn't just happen. It's God who makes it to happen. So if you're not connected to God, you will not be able to, to that scripture will not be able to be a practical reality in your life. Let me put it that way. So that scripture will be a practical reality for you when you actually are in right standing with God. So you see, we're just seeing the signs and what we should be doing is preparing ourselves and knowing that Christ can come at any time. It's closer than some people say, oh, we've been saying that Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. How soon? Since I was born, they've been saying soon. In the, the time I was born and now, like the time when I was maybe a toddler or the time when I got to be a teenager, the world was not as bad as it is right now, believe me. So we're really getting closer. Closer than you can even imagine. Closer than it could even be the next moment. We can be talking here and rapture happens. We can be sitting here on the chapter idea and boom, that's it. Somebody said maybe if the trumpet sounds on a Sunday, a lot of a lot more people than normal will go to heaven than if it sounds on a normal regular day. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding me? Also, no, that a lot more people are more pious and more uh, um, sanctimonious like on Sundays than any other day. So maybe if the trumpet sounds on a Sunday, a lot more people will go to heaven than normal. <laughs> oh my god that, that's so funny anyway okay so let's go on this says um, let Israel rejoice in him that made him let the children of Zion be joyful in their king so who are you rejoicing in who is your boast in my boast is in God I know the God I serve I know that he's a king I know that he's a faithful father. I know that he's a God who answers prayers. I know that he's a God who is never late. He's always on time. I know that he's a God who will always come through for me. Who do you know him as? Who are you rejoicing about him for? Like what in your life can you confidently say you're rejoicing about God for me? Everything. You look at me like this. I'm a walking testimony. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> the things God has done for me. The things God has done for me. I just have to praise God. Like, lately, things happen to me, and I'm so calm that sometimes I keep checking myself if I'm okay. Like, are you normal? Is this even like... Because before now, I'll be... I, I could literally be in a week or a month in panic mode. Like, I, I'm shaking like one winter chicken. Like... Yeah. Oh my God. See, when God takes care of your matter, eh, He takes care of your matter. And, and for me, it's a rejoicing that will never end or that should never end because while I'm alive, that means oh, yeah. that my maker still wants me around, right? When you oh, make yeah. you keep it there, it means that you want that thing to be there. And to as long there. as there, that thing owes it to you to just praise oh, yeah. you to, to be happy because many will want to even be there you know for example when they say we are clay in the potter's hand well there's mm -hmm. some clay that he discards there's some clay that he passions anyhow so mm -hmm. let's be rejoicing the way you are and why you are still having bread and everything because some would have wanted to be there you know how we used to sing in Seca some have food but cannot eat but that cannot eat some can eat but don't have food so in either way so when you are still alive and breathing and you know who made you because some don't know or some pretend that they don't know oh yeah you know, i will rejoice and this is this is something that for me makes a big difference the way we will know rejoice and the way the world either rejoices or is bitter have you seen people who are bitter even for just oh, yeah. seeing you they are bitter. It's because oh, they yeah. don't know. 
Because princess, oh, why would I be bitter in my rejoicing? When I myself know who I am, who is my maker, and I'm supposed to be rejoicing, why would I be bitter that you're rejoicing? It's because they have no clue. And why would I not do my own source of rejoicing from drinks, alcohol, sex, all of those things? When I did not know, I thought that was it. But now that I know, you see. I mean, I've lost somebody, but I'm rejoicing. I'm happy. I'm, I mean, I'm joyful. I choose joy every day. Like, you can even say something. Moment. As soon as you finish saying it, I start singing. You think that I'm provoking you? No, I'm just being joyful. I'm just oh, yeah. choosing to rejoice. Because as you say, you're the daughter of a king. So mm. why do you, what do you do with sadness? I know. It has no place in your life. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And the Bible also says somewhere that there is hope for it living dog than a dead lion the lion is the king of the jungle of course but if it's dead what is so much about it is nothing a living dog is better than that dead lion because that that dog is still alive and he has hope there is still hope for it so if you're still alive today you have every reason to praise god there is nothing so special that you did that god made you to believe in today it's his grace it's his mercy and you should not frustrate that grace of mercy. And you should not take it for granted. You should be grateful and you should show your appreciation for the fact that you're still alive. Mm -hmm. Some people are even alive, but they're not as healthy as you are. People are literally paying for oxygen in the hospital. Some people have died because they could not even get the oxygen that they had the money to pay for. They couldn't get it in time, so they died. You're here, you're collecting it for free. You're healthy, you're strong and kicking. You are grumbling. May the good Lord forgive us and help us. And then it goes on to say, let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with a timbrel and harp. You guys know me, right? I'm always using either my hands, flipping them, my fingers, using this. I'm doing my talk drums like that. Use everything that you can to praise God. Okay? Hmm? Praise him with a dance. Say you know how to dance. I said, David, that mm -hmm. hey, hey, hey. it gets us to be put on your dancing shoes or prepare yourself because uh, it go hot. <laughs> and, I, and I remember you um, describing the way David was dancing and how he must oh, have been yeah. taken by the Holy Spirit, you know. And I was laughing and I was saying, Yes, there's dance and dance, and yeah, I'm that's a point. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> David was a true dancer. No jokes about it. Because uh, he should have danced. He, he should have literally danced himself out for his rapper to fall off. No, there's no jokes about it too. <laughs> rapper, this is the rapper that they used to tie and probably go for battle or go for whatever because that's what they went to collect the ark, right? They were bringing the ark of God back to their town. So it's not like they were just supposed to dress anyhow. They really dressed well because they had gone to another town and he's a king for that matter to bring the ark of God. So he was not supposed to just be dressed anyhow. You know, just, just on that joke of a money time, Joe wraps some small apart for his skin. So now why did the team fall? Because he was not well. <laughs> he was well dressed. They're coming from another country, from another town, to another city to collect the ark of God. So he began to come off fine. Not king. Hmm. But he danced on the what he was wearing fell off. You say, Hey God, hey. Holy Spirit, take over. I'll take over. When the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, I'll dance like David dance. Eh? I go dance, I go dance, I go dance, I make more cool dance. <laughs> My whole fire. <laughs> Says, praise him with hearts and timbrel. Praise him with your mouth. If you don't get drum, if you don't get timbrels, if you don't get praise him with your mouth, clap your hand, then use your hand. Eh? Use anything. If possible, if you take cover pan, not come, say it's not the one that you go use them. Do it, do it as you can. But the only thing is that praise God. The important thing is you have to praise God. Do it, people of God. Do it as you can. Hey, it's well. It says, For the Lord take a pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. God leaves the meek and he despises the proud. We, we don't know which language that we can use to say it. Maybe if I knew 
man can talk, I'll say it in man can. Maybe if I knew Bafut, I'll say it in Bafut. If I knew Bakwari, if I knew Bayangi, if I knew um, um, whichever one, any country talk, I will talk about the country talk. See, eh? God hates pride. With, I mean, he dreads it with every part of him. And it's pride that makes people to keep falling. It was pride that made the devil to fall. It's pride that has brought down a lot of great men. For oh God, the kingdom, pride no get place. Well, can we just understand this? Can we just believe it? So that we can we can get what God has in store for us. Make we understand and know. Where can we just get it right? He said he will beautify the meek. It it is the humble that he wants. He wants to fix you. He wants to I you want to fix it or fix it or showcase you like a prized jewel. Can you just humble yourself before the Lord? Let him honor you. Let him beautify you. Can you truly surrender? Can you truly surrender? Because sometimes we get humility mixed up. A lot of people, they are they're, they're dispositioned to be humble because they don't have some things. Give them those things and then they stay humble. Then you would say this person is a humble person. You, they, they gave a scenario in a certain message that I was watching where they're talking to ladies. They're like, oh, a lot of ladies who are wealthy, a lot of ladies who are well-to-do. They didn't say all. Oh, a lot of ladies who are well-to-do are not very humble. And so they're giving an example that, for example, you want to go for a leisure trip, maybe with your friends, or you just want to have time out for yourself. And then you go tell your husband, you say you want to go to maybe to the Bahamas. And he says you ain't going to the Bahamas. And then you sit right down there and you don't go to the Bahamas. See, humility is not that there. Your husband had to pay that trip for you. And then because he has said you're not going, you don't go, you're humble. Mm -mm. Humility is when you have the money to pay to go to the Bahamas and have a great time. And then your husband says you need to go. Then you don't move. That's humility. Because... If you don't have the money, we cannot calculate your humility there because it's not you taking care of that trip. But when you can take care of that trip, then your husband says you aren't doing it. Then you're on that, you're subjected to his authority that you're humble. So yes, some of us, we are kind of just dispositioned to be humble because we don't have some particular things. And now... People start seeing our arrogance when God has given us those things. It's not supposed to be so. Say, when I get money, I go show the yeah, motive already wrong. You know, go get the money. My brother, my sister, pray from now to tomorrow. Since some of us will not receive the things that we were supposed to, were asking because we're praying amiss. Why do you want the car? Why do you want the jet? Why do you want the child? Why do you want to be married? Why do you want that uh, 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 um, 5 million subscribers? Why do you want... Just name it. Name it. Those things that the world sees like those are the things that are raining, that are trending. Why do you want them? You want them for the wrong reason, the very wrong reason. All my friends are married, so that's why I want to be married. All my friends who are married and they're married, they have kids, so you want to have kids. Like, are you for real? Are you for real right now? You have to have the right reasons to want some things and then God is going to give it to you. But we cannot humble ourselves and wait in the presence of God and receive those things. That's why we're not having them. But may the good Lord help us to calm down, calm down and surrender and humble ourselves so that he will give us. When we humble ourselves, he will uplift us. When we humble ourselves, he will beautify us. That's what the scripture says here. He wants to beautify the meek. Hey. Princess. God to beautify you. Can you imagine? Princess. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. In this verse, I know this. His people are humble. His people are oh, yeah. humble. If you're not, you don't consider yourself to be part of his people or to be his person, then he will not take pleasure in you. Oh, yeah. Uh, when it comes together with uh, Adon's the humble, 
He adores the humble, and scripture has already said it, he despises the proud. And he oh, yeah. adores salvation means that um, he, he, he kind of holds, holds you up in that choice that you have made to be his person. And oh, yeah. I think about um, how he said, without um, faith, we cannot please God, right? Oh, yeah. And faith is in who? In his works oh, and in yeah. Jesus and that is it. And sometimes when, when we read and we just want to talk and go, um, we can, as we are doing, reflect on each verse and even the words. And then we'll see that it's really speaking to us and either exhorting us or encouraging us or, you know, equipping us. And I'm like, wow. Or reproving us as well. Because most times we love all the beautiful parts where it's blessings, blessings, blessings in the Bible. But we seem not to enjoy the parts where God is reproving us. Because probably it could be me, it could be you, it could be someone out there who is living a life full of pride. But you're not sitting down and thinking about it and meditating on it. Like I always say. I, I love to always personalize the word of God. When the word of God comes like this, I try to search myself clearly and nicely inside. I'm like, Lord, I know that this word is for me. So what are you saying? Am I, am I proud or am I almost getting there? Or, you know, are you just giving me this so that I should learn to be able to help other people? Or is it really for me? Or like, how is the message coming? You know? I really do as much as possible to personalize it before because before I used to be the kind of person that was that proud when a message is coming I'm looking at the other person that needs it this one needs this message this message is for this person I forget myself and for the most part most of those messages were for me but um, as the message is coming I've already had that defense like me I'm fine already I'm good it's for this person it's for A, it's for B, it's for sister this, it's for brother this. This message, they need to hear. Hope they're hearing. Hope they're understanding this message. That ministration is for you. That's why you're getting all those things that you're getting and pointing people. Say, look at the love of wood in your eye. You want to go and remove a speck in somebody's eye. You never finish your own. You want to go and remove speck from somebody's eye. Are you even all right? You know, that's how. So most of the times, when the word of God is coming, I, I I do the best I can to personalize it as much as I can so that let me know what God wants me to learn from it as a person, as an individual, before he's telling me that, okay, it's also for this person or it's also for that person. And then he teaches me how to go and give the person or how to get the message to the person. Because sometimes you might have a very good message, a well-meaning message, but you take it somehow people just misunderstand it. They'll just mix everything up. They'll just jumble everything up for you and it will turn out to be something entirely different from whatever you had, whatever you anticipated. I got into that experience recently and it's not funny. But the important thing is do the part that God wants you to do. If you're sure that this is what God wants you to do, go ahead and do it. It doesn't matter who gets angry, who gets happy, who gets okay, or who doesn't get okay with it. Most of the times, when God is bringing a, uh, a message to correct people or to reprimand people, most people don't want to take it. But when he's bringing a message of, I bless you, you will overcome, you will do this, everybody is shouting, amen, amen, hallelujah. But when he's bringing the one that is correcting you so that you should get back on track, maybe you've derailed, maybe you've departed a little and he wants to bring you back on track. Oh man, no one that kind of message. May the good Lord help us in Jesus' name. That scripture says that the word of God comes to to bless, to reprove, to inspire, to transform. It gives different, different things. Reproving, did it? And so at some point, one of my best scriptures that was in the Bible was Hebrews, um, Hebrews 11, 12 or something. Or 12, 6 or something. There, it says the one God's love, he chastises. He does not chase, he doesn't bother about orphans. He said, an orphan, they don't get paid, so he correct them. But me, I'm not an orphan. I'm a child of the Most High God, so he will chastise me because even my biological parents, they will correct me. They will do those things. They will deal with me when I do some things wrong. God is better than my biological father. So, of course, I need to be corrected and adjusted when I'm going astray. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, God loves when we're humble. God loves when we're meek. 
And when we're like that, he raises us, he lifts us up, he beautifies us, he empowers us, he carries us to the highest of hands. Like I said, it's actually intriguing how the kingdom works. In the kingdom of heaven, the way up is down. Servanthood. While in the world, the system of the world expects you to be going up. For you to go up, you should be going up. And as you're going up, mash anybody that you can mash as much as you can, as long as you go up. That's the world system. That's why some people do anything and everything to be in the position of power without caring whether they kill or they do whatever or they do whatever to other people. But in the kingdom of heaven, my darling Derek, you are called to serve. You are saved to serve. You are not saved to be served. You are saved to serve others. <laughs> It doesn't sound very funny, but it's a very beautiful experience when you get to understand it. Minister Mark, what do you think? Ain't it a beautiful experience to serve people? It's beautiful, right? Very beautiful. The next one says, where, where are we first? Five, okay. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Mm. You sing everywhere. Minister Mark did a uh, praise dance at 12 midnight, yeah? They say, put on your sportswear. Come and sit down. <laughs> in, in good times, in bad times, whether you're walking or you're lying in your bed sick, I, I used to wonder how people who are sick on their dying beds, they're praising, they're smiling. As a child, right, I did not know all of these things, but now I know, and it, it, it's, it's what it, it makes Say that again. Like, uh, like one of the last videos of Dr. Charles Stanley before he died, somebody was singing to him, it is well with my soul, right? So he was already singing that like he was on his oh way, my. and he was just praising and praising, oh my goodness. I'm like, what a life well lived. Billy, Billy Graham lived for 100 years, princess, can you imagine that? Wait, do that again. Say that again. It's only freezing. We didn't hear. Huh? It was freezing. Did you hear what I said? Yes, yeah, say it again now. We can hear you now. It was I freezing said, at that time. I said, live for 100 years. I just saw it today on the site. From 1918 to 2018. That's 100 years. Wow. I'm telling you. And the man wasn't even like somebody who is completely finished. He was just old what? and perfect. I'm telling you, I don't oh. know how long I'm standing there, but you know, God has awesome people. I'm like, hey, Papa, hey, Papa. That's beautiful. People who sing for joy on their beds, you know? Oh, yeah. Like, Catherine Kluman, she was on her bed and she said she wanted songs and she wanted roses and she was seeing things in the clouds. Oh, my God. Triumphant entry, that's how they call that one. <laughs> See, I want to get to that place where if I'm not raptured, like I'm alive and I'm raptured, I want to get to that place where I can say like the apostle said, I've run the race, I've finished my course, and the crown of glory awaits me in heaven. I want to be able to say that confidently. I remember Dr. Mans Moreau said something like that. He didn't say it exactly like that. He said that, he knows that God will only remove him from this earth when he's done with what he has to do on earth. That's all that God has put in him, all the potential that God has put in him. He should have used it totally to the last of the last before God will remove him from here. That's what he said. And I mean, his legacy is still living on till today. Like, it's just amazing how God used a lot of people like that and they are blessing, a tremendous blessing, even when they're not here. Lord, help me to be the one that would serve you to the end, we praise you to the end, we enjoy the joy of, of your glory. We, we, like, my life will be, um, my life will be something that you can use to glorify yourself, that people will see your glory through me, people will see your power through me. Use me, I avail myself. Stay available, overlook me. 
Use me as you please. And he goes to say, let the high praise of God be in their mouth and the two-edged sword in their hands. The two-edged sword here, the last time I checked, the word of God is the sword of the spirit. So when they're talking about two-edged sword, no go find knife. <laughs> no go find knife literally, like go find sword and get two sides. No. The last time I checked in the word of God, the word of God is the sword of the spirit. So that to be your two-edged sword. And if it's a two-edged sword that it's working in you while you're telling people about it. It's also working in you. It's also sapping you. It's also shaping you. You're also looking your, like yourself in the mirror of the world as you're becoming more like God. And no one needs to be taken off. What needs to be added? What needs to be put in? So it's not only cursing you. It's not only cursing the people. It's cursing you as well. Just like I said, I used to always listen to messages and be like, oh, it's for that person, it's for that person. It's also for me. It's also for me. There's several times here where myself and Mr. Man will listen to a message and then we'll be like, oh God, say, no, it's for two of you. You're not listening to this message for you, then it's for two of you. We've had that several times, right? When God will say, this message is for two of you, it's not just for you alone that you're listening. It's not just for this person, it's for two of you. We've had that several times. So the two-edged sword there is not basically like a sword, a physical sword, it's the word of God. When you're talking about the sword of the spirit, it's the word of God. So this is why we're doing a chapter a day some more and some more, right? When you do a chapter a day, you're studying the word of God and it's becoming a practical reality in your life. Is becoming a part and parcel of your life. So, another one says, um, verse 7 says, to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon the people. Hmm. This one is interesting because a lot of times people say those things like, you want to correct somebody, you're telling them what the word of God says, as opposed to what they're doing, but they don't judge me. God is giving us authority to execute vengeance. That's some sort of vengeance, like right? telling people, correcting people, giving them the right thing as opposed to the wrong thing that they have and they're holding on to. In this our generation, people don't like correction. Anytime you want to correct someone for something wrong that they're doing, they start, don't judge me, don't judge me. We're not judging you. The Bible is expressly clear. All fornicators have their place in their fire. All adulterers, all liars, all thieves, all homemongers, all whatever. Just name it. You know the one that you're involved in. You have your place in your fire. So if I come and I'm repeating that scripture to you, I'm not condemning you. You are condemning yourself by not accepting the way out which is Jesus Christ, the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. That's what this is about. So you cannot go on and be saying, I'm judging you. The Bible is here that you, he will give you the authority to do this and to bring the punishment upon the people. It says to bind their things in chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. It reach that level. You even be dealing with kings and, and noble people. Now you go to give and sanction. My friend and I, we used to make this joke when we were, when we were kind of younger. Not really, yeah, when we were younger, like when we were in the university, we used to make this joke when our friends would laugh at us, say, now we go walk here for heaven. You better treat us nicely now because uh, we will just send you for air fire. As you don't need to heaven get to the send you for air fire. <laughs> God, God, will not be known nothing about God. Like, so we knew, but we're not accepting the three work of Christ on the cross. But now we be the claim the work at all places, the singer way that we go okay for heaven. So if you reach heaven, eh, you know be the truth you have eh, go go heaven. <laughs> oh my god. So God will there'll there'll come a time when God will give us that authority, give us that power to so execute vengeance upon all these people. He will give us the power, he will give us the authority, he will give us all that it takes to be able to do this thing. He said he will execute this judgment upon them because the judgment would have been written. So we're just coming to declare it as it is written. He will give us the authority to do that. And now that 
you are not totally condemned, then you will be totally condemned. But now you still have a chance to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? The Lord is calling on you. What are you waiting for? You don't like this. We know that you don't like this life you're living. When I was there, I didn't like it. But I just didn't know the way out until I knew the way out. I'm living this life. A lot of people want to live this life that I'm living. A lot of people want to live this life that Mr. Mark is living. But you have the first step to take. You have to accept Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior. If you have the Holy Spirit that helps you to live the life, you cannot do it on your own, child of God. You cannot do it on your own. That's why it's so hard for people who are playing church. It's so hard for people who want to be one leg in, one leg out. But when you totally surrender, when you fully surrender, it is a different ball game entirely. It is beautiful. I can tell you that because I've been there. I've tried to play church too. I lived the life where I was wanting to be one leg in, one leg out, wanting to please my please my friends in the world and wanting to please the people in the church. It was it was never supposed to have been about them. It was supposed to be about me and God. But oh, that's how much I knew. I knew I either had to be pleasing the people in church or pleasing the people in the world. And I wanted to please both. I didn't want to please one side and please the other. I, I, I little did that understand perfectly that you cannot serve God and mammon. You have to take a peek. You cannot be in the middle. I would say to you, either hot or cold. If you are lukewarm, I pull you out. So you have to take a peek. You have to. You cannot be here. And you cannot eat your cake and have it. That's the English um, pineapple, right? You cannot eat your cake and have it. Some people want to eat their cake and have it. You want to be in the world and be in Christ. In a walk. In a walk, you cannot love two masters the same. You cannot serve two masters at the same time. You have to choose one and go with that one that you're serving. As for me and my house and the people I care about and the people I love, we will serve the Lord, though. I don't know about you. The choice is yours. But as for me and my house, we're serving God. No jokes about it. it says to execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints. Praise be the Lord. It's an honor that God is giving to the saints. And that's why all the more we should go ahead and preach the gospel. We should go ahead and tell the people of the things that await them if they are not repenting. We should tell them. What are they calling judgment? What are they calling word? Do your part and let their blood be taken off your hands. Do your part. Princess, you know that song? Why I know go make nyanga? Why I know go make nyanga? I know the song will life and direct. You, you know, life what, and direct. When Sam wraps up with this is honor for the saints. I'm like, so it's honorable for me to, to walk in this assurance of who I am because my maker says that this is who I am and this is what he will oh, do to me. If oh, I yeah. stay, you know, in that awareness. That I am That's his child, true. I am his servant, I have to stay humble and all of that. So you see, huh, I was just I'm thinking you. when we were when I was growing up in class, I used to be one of the talkative ones. But there'll be some quiet guys, especially when I was like in class six, but they're the ones who take first. And then we the, so I'm like, they already know where their strength comes from, and they don't need to make noise in class. Oh, to yeah. show they know that they are intelligent, you know, that kind of thing. And yes, I will pass, but I will not pass like them, you know, and I would envy them. I'll be like, where is all of that confidence coming from? Where is all of that, you know, stuff like that? I remember one guy in particular. And today now it is like me in my Christian work. I'm so confident of the work, who I am, what oh, is yeah. my inheritance in it all and everything. So and people are surprised. As much as I know that I know that I know that I know. And so I carry myself around with, you know, so oh, that's assurance. 
just going to any kind of quack place, you know, going to any club and any of those dirty places. <laughs> oh, that's, I know. Not that's not honorable. Yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm not praising my father by, you know, doing by those doing kind of things or going to those kinds of places. This scripture, not just read it or not just go and listen to it, but when you study it, a lot of things come to you and they fill you up in a way that it would not have been possible if you did not study it yourself. Oh and yeah, you didn't have as a child, you know. So that's true. Sometimes I'm just listening to you and I'm just thinking about everything in my head, and sometimes I go and write things down. But um, yeah, I just want to encourage people to do this. Oh my goodness. Oh yes, study the word of God for yourself. It is very, very important. You you will not understand what we're talking about until you do it yourself. When you do it, you'll be able to say what we're saying. You'll be able to talk like we're talking. You'll be able to confidently know that this thing is no joke. When you study this thing yourself, you have a kind of there is a kind of revelation God will even give you personally. There are some things he wants to tell you. He wants you to know. There are some things he wants you to learn. But he will not be able to do that to you when you don't come to him, when you don't have that relationship with him. He cannot tell you. Sometimes he might use a lot of things around you to draw your attention. But until you actually need to that thing that he's drawing your attention to, nothing can happen. Unfortunately, nothing can happen. So we have to get it right. We really have to get it right. So, people, it has been another amazing session on the chapter today. I'm so glad. When it's a man, it's always a very, very much big blessing to us whenever she comes here. And like I said, she always has to know when she goes on those her enjoyment trips and comes back. <laughs> this time around, it was set days enjoyment. Oh my God, it was amazing. And yes, so testimonies are coming up and all that, you know. Tomorrow is Psalms 150. I keep saying, don't miss it for anything in this world. Tell everyone to tell everyone to tell everyone. We're going to put it there, out there, and you can share it and share it to as many people as possible. They can actually put on their notifications and wait for us and make sure that they're part of the chapter. If you just don't know what God has in store for you, so please make it a date with us. Today, we're going to be praying that God should help us to stay humble. Sometimes, it's the people around you that kind of put that thing in your head. Because some people started humble. Though. Some people started humble. Saul started humble, but he didn't end humble. He started wanting to be a people pleaser. And so, he started taking over. Pride started taking over. I could imagine how sometimes the people are saying, but you're the king. You can do it. Uh, why should you wait for that someone said, is he not just a normal prince? You're the king. You can change the rules. You can decree the thing and it comes to pass. Of course, the kings in those days had that kind of liberty. But based on scriptures, there were things that they were just meant to be. Only priests who do it, not kings. It's in our generation that we're honored. To be able to walk in the in the position of kings and priests. Oh my God! How cool can this get? How cool does it get? We have the authority to be able to walk as kings and priests. In the old days, they didn't have it, and that's why someone was Samson. Do you know what that means? May the good Lord help us. So let's pray, and then Minister Mark will pray to close us. So please don't go away. Don't go away. We have to pray to close us. So let's pray for the people that that God will help His people to stay humble and that nothing to push us into the place of pride, so we lose our place in God. Let's pray. Father, we come before your throne of grace, O God. We bring before you all your children, O God. Father, we pray that you're going to help us to stay humble. That nothing is going to put us in the place of pride. Neither the people that you give us to step out, or the people that are around us, or whoever, O God. Let nothing or no one, O God, cause us to get to that place and start feeling like we're bigger than you. We're, we're, we start feeling like we don't need you. Lord, let's help us, each and every one of us, to continuously, every single day, every single moment, know that we need you in our life. 
for anything that we want to do, anything that we want to involve in, oh Lord, help us to understand that we need you. Because it's only by your power and your grace and your strength that we can be the kind of person that you want us to be. It's only by your power, by your grace, by your strength that we can stay humble and then we get elevated by you. So Lord, we pray, oh God, that you're going to release upon us the grace to stay humble, the grace to remain in the place of humility now and always. Lord, we appreciate you. We do not take it for granted. We know that you love us this much and you will do and undo for our sake. Father, we just want to say thank you. Help us to stay in the place of humility now and forever. For in Jesus' name we pray. And all the saints shall say, Amen. Tomorrow is another day. Psalm 150. Oh my God, we are about to finish this psalm. It has been a beautiful journey. A beautiful sound journey, people. And that's why the Lord has something really spectacular for us tomorrow. I don't know how to put it else, but that's just the simple way I can put it. Don't miss it for anything in the world. Let's come and have a swell time together in the presence of God. We have our, uh, this audio Bible on TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, um, Instagram. And we're looking forward to other social media platforms like Twitter and the rest. Anyone that there is, we're going to put the word of God there because it's operation spread the word. If the people of the world are not resting to propagate all that they are propagating into our faces, the things, the narratives that they want to push into our minds, we to our narrative is to push the word of God into people's minds. So we'll put it everywhere, wherever possible we can. We will put it there too. We will put their own for face. We will put their own to for face. We will put one to for their faces. May all man put it on. Eh? Yes, that's how we roll. That's how we roll. So, please go on there. Listen, listen, listen. Minister Mark is also on all social media platforms. She does morning devotion. She encourages us through exercises. She encourages us with, even with some really nice balanced meals and diets that we can take. You know, she also does evening devotions. I mean, and this month, she's talking on grace. Please go and get the right understanding of grace. Eh? Let's stop frustrating the grace of God. Go and follow her. Praise God. And get a better understanding of grace. So, Minister Mark, over to you. Pray and close us. I pray. Yeah, go ahead. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we want to thank you for this beautiful time, this wonderful time we spent together talking about your goodness, praising you. Father God, we want to thank you so much because you enable us through your Holy Spirit to continue to stay in this awareness and to continue to be humble in spite of everything that could make us proud. Father mm -hmm. God, if anything to be proud of is to be proud of being your children and oh, having yeah. you maker and being able to please you by our faith. We continue oh, yeah. to implore you, Father God, to increase our faith in the oh, mighty name of Jesus. We ask you all oh, the time yeah. because we know that's the only way we can really please you. We thank you, Father, for Jesus Christ because by his stripes we are healed. We thank oh, yeah. you because by his blood we are healed and we are covered. We thank you so much because through his righteousness, we can dare approach the throne of grace and the seat of mercy mm -hmm. God, and mm -hmm. have it renewed upon us each day. Thank oh, you yeah. so much, Father God, for all you teach us in your word. Thank yes. you, Father God, for making us curious to learn more and more and to mm -hmm. do so in a very humble way. Father God, oh, we yeah. are so honored to be your children. May we yes, not forget. May we not take this for granted. And may we not go out into this fallen world seeking for other things that can bring honor to us, forgetting that it's only in you that we yes, find Father so God, we want to seek you first. Seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. Help us, Papa, yes, to come to you when we are weary and heavy laden. Help us, Papa, to praise you in every circumstance, Father God. Yes, we believe that you will see us through it all. Thank you so much, Father God, that we are gathered here. You say where two or three are gathered in your name, you are in their midst, and so we don't yes, doubt it, Papa. 
and continue to bless us and to strengthen us so that each time we gather, we might live more edified, we might live more encouraged, and we might live more equipped. To you Amen. be all glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Until tomorrow, people. Bye. Bye.